My sermonette today is going to be about the seed that blessed all nations. Our text is taken out of Genesis chapter 22. We're going to start with verse 15. This passage is right after Abraham would have sacrificed Isaac. And so the angel of the Lord is coming again and blessing him. He says, And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time, and said, By myself I have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing, and hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of the, his enemies. And in thy seed shall all nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. So this blessing is unique, and that is not only to Abraham or his descendants, but it also promises that all nations will be blessed by this seed. But, in, so, but how could Abraham's seed bless, his, bless all nations? The Israelite, his physical seed, certainly never blessed other nations. But this prophecy is repeated many times in Gentiles, in Genesis. In Genesis chapter 12, verse 3, when God told Abraham to leave his country, he said, And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. And again, in Genesis 18, verse 17, before Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed, and the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him? And again, in chapter 26, verse 4, to Isaac, he said, And I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of the heaven, and will give unto thy seed all the countries, and in thy seed shall all nations of the earth be blessed. Amen. So we ask, how can Abraham's seed bless all nations? And it talks about this verse in Acts chapter 3, verse 24. This is, it says in verse 24, Yea, and all the prophets from Samuel and those that follow after, as many as have spoken, have likewise foretold of these days. Ye are the children of the, pro of the prophets, and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, And in thy seed shall all kindreds of the earth be blessed. Unto you first, God, having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you, in turning every one, away, every one of you, turning away every one of you from his iniquities. So the times they were talking about was after Jesus had risen from the dead and taken away sin. So the seed that blessed all nations is Christ. He came to earth and blessed not only the Israelites, but all kindreds of the earth. And how did he bless him? Verse 26 says that the blessing is in turning people away from their sins and thus freeing them from the bondage and the power of death. Thanks be to God. In Galatians 3, verse 15, it talks more about this prophecy and blessing. It says, Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be a man's covenant, yet it be confirmed, no man disannulleth or addeth thereto. Now unto Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not, and to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ, the law, which, the law which was 430 years after, cannot disannul that it should make the promise of none effect. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. So this plainly states that the seed, that Jesus is the seed, and that this is, not, this is a blessing for all nations of the earth through Jesus. The, now the promises are by faith. So th these, uh, the, those under the law were not, were not blessed here. 
It was after the law that this covenant was brought to fruition. And when it, and when it comes, who does it bless? Through faith, all nations can be blessed. Not just the Israelites to whom the law was given, but all nations can now be blessed through this new seed and the new and living way. Yeah, later on in this chapter, Galatians chapter 3, verse 27, he goes on to explain about the purpose of the law. But then in verse 27, he says, For as many of you have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. So here he shows that the promises are extended to all peoples and nations through Jesus. So Jesus is the seed that blessed all nations, and we... As Abraham's spiritual descendants can access these blessings. So all the, they that are of faith are descendants of Abraham spiritually. Amen. In Romans chapter 15, verse 8, it shows some more prophecies about Jesus uniting both Jews and Gentiles into one fold. It says, now, that, now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto the fathers, and that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, for this cause I will confess to thee among the Gentiles, and sing unto thy name. And again he saith, rejoice ye Gentiles with his people. And again Isaiah saith, there shall be a root of Jesse, and he that sh shall rise to reign over the Gentiles, and in him shall the Gentiles trust. So we can see there are many prophecies about Jesus as a unifier. But why was it so important to make all these prophecies about bringing in the Gentiles? These prophecies show that God's purpose and plan was the same throughout all time. God revealed his covenant to take away sins and bless all nations to Abraham long before the law was given. And this is so important, and it's so important to understand this because, this, uh, because it can give us the confidence to know that God does not change and that his promises are sure. So we know that when God promises that he will bless us and that he's going to provide a home in heaven, we know that he is not going to change. If we, if we thought that God was just changed his mind about the law, we could have no, nothing to base ourselves on. We, we couldn't be sure that God would stand forever on his promises. But now, through these prophecies, we can see that God's eternal purpose is never changed and never will change. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11 says, Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, ye who were sometimes far, were far off, are made nigh through the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make him in himself twain one new man, so making peace." And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you which were far off, and to them that were nigh. For through him we both have access by one Spirit unto the Father. Now therefore you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. So this right here is talking about the 
fulfillment of the prophecy, all nations of the earth will be blessed. This is very different from the old covenant in which only the Israelites were the chosen people and out of them only the priests could come near to God. But in John 3.16 it says, God so loved the world, the whole world, that he gave his only begotten Son. When Jesus died, he delivered salvation to both Jews and Gentiles, and, be, and so became our peace. Well, live making that one way for us all to come through. In Galatians chapter 3, verse 6, it says, Even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness, know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. Abraham blessed all that believed through his seed, and he opened up the way for salvation by faith. Abraham's faith was counted for, for righteousness, but in order for God to be just, there had to be a sacrifice through Jesus. So, so when, when God did this, he, Abraham believed God and he counted it for righteousness. You can imagine the angels and the people in the heaven wondering, how can he do this? God is a just God. But later on we see that Jesus died and made this way open so that through the faith of Abraham, we can come to God. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 5 says, Which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of man, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body, and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. As with many prophecies, the full import was not realized until after they were fulfilled. It was, it, it was not made known to the sons of men. They had the prophecies there, but they didn't understand them. It was such a far out notion that God should accept all people that they didn't realize it. So these prophecies, like I mentioned before, show us that God's plan does not change and will not change. And they are a blessing unto us in this day. In Romans chapter 4, verse 13, he says, For the promise that he should be heir of the world was not to Abraham or as to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if they which are of the law be heirs, Faith is made void, and the promise made of none effect. Because the law worketh wrath, for where there no law is, there is no transgression. Therefore it is of faith that it might be by, by grace, to the end that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only that which is of the law, but that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. So Jesus united us by making one way, the faith of Abraham, and by opening that way to everyone. So this is a, an important part of God's perfect plan of salvation. He planned from the beginning for there to be one bride and one church. And, and now he has united us under all, under one head, Jesus Christ. He certainly has blessed all nations. Thank you.